Hello everyone, uh, I am Perlox of SpawnRoom.com and this is the third episode of the Competitive Snapshot. It's been a little while since I've made one, but uh, recently I've been just playing a ton of Counter-Strike and I was like, I should make a new video because I have been frustrated with a lot of, like, when I get random people on my team, they run around bomb sites like they have no idea what's going on. Um, even, you know, like I play in the AK bracket and people are pretty good, but there's still a lot of people that just, they don't really know where to look. They don't know where to sit, stand, that sort of thing. So this video is focusing on bomb site coverage, specifically bomb site A on Dust 2. There'll be a separate video for bomb site B, which will be in the video description below once I film it. Um, but yeah, this one's going to focus just on bomb site A. It's going to cover where to stand, like strong positions, weak positions, um, how to move once your allies start dying, like where should you shift to. Um, it's also going to cover smoke grenades, uh, flashbangs, some different strategies you can employ, both to defend and to attack. So, um, so you'll kind of get you know both sides of that coin. Uh, yeah, so enjoy. Let me know if you like it. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, that kind of thing. If you hate it, dislike, I guess. Um, and then please like leave a comment, I guess, why or how I can make it better. Um, hopefully it won't get super long-winded because I know some of my videos in the past uh, have done some basic coverage like this, but then ran on for like you know, 20 minutes, half an hour. Some, some of them, my match coverage videos have ran on for like an hour. And this is a good example because I'm rambling right now. So let's jump right to the game. All right, let's take a look at some of the strong positions at Bombsite A. The first player we're going to place is one op, auto, or precision rifler at long A, covering double doors and supporting the bomb site. This player can choose to hold pit, which offers strong defense from invading enemies, but essentially traps him from any retreat. The back platform is another option that leaves them more vulnerable to double doors, but gains increased angles on the bomb site especially useful when the bomb is planted for this position. You can additionally stand against blue crate or this sidewall to surprise enemies up close, especially if using pistols or SMGs where you need to close the gap. But this can be a bit more suicidal and less helpful to teammates that are at the bomb site as you don't have an angle on them. Try experimenting with each of these positions and variations on them to see which works best for you under which conditions and which weapons. The second position is to place one player on ramp, which offers one critical coverage spot and two supporting coverage spots. The critical coverage spot is to watch for enemies coming from CT spawn. Either a rifler or an op can stand here depending on the situation. For instance, enemies at bombsite B are excellent targets for a long-range op, but that player may be vulnerable if enemies are already up close. Instead, you'd want a rifle at this location, where he would not exceed an angle past the brown door, the reason being that exposing beyond that can result in op picks from the enemy team. This position also allows for supporting long A and catwalk, or short A. The main vulnerability here is that you are open to long A once it's taken. There's really nowhere to hide, and behind crates here doesn't offer as much support. And you're the first to die if there is a ramp rush. It is also generally naded quite heavily during catwalk pushes. HE grenades and flashes will come over this section and land all above you. The third position is around crates on the bomb site. This position is very strong when your team is alive because there are no angles to take fire from unless the enemy gets up close. Your main job here is to support ramp and catwalk and be either the last or second to last surviving teammate since it is very difficult for you to get picked. This position can be aided by using small gaps in the boxes to view enemy movements. This allows you to time when and at which angle you engage the enemy.
The main vulnerability of this position is that it shifts from strong to weak if you're the only one left and up against more than one enemy. This is because you cannot watch multiple positions at once, so your back will be to an enemy at some point. If this is the case, and you are not concerned about getting sniped long, you can either shift to this position to narrow the angle of coverage, or, if possible, move to the back corner of A. This leads us perfectly to the fourth position, which is this back corner. This position allows for close coverage of the bomb site, supporting coverage of ramp and long A, and also coverage of catwalk. This position is another that will generally keep you alive to the very last moments of the round. It is important to only peek catwalk at the beginning when you're first covering this area, or when you know that there are no enemies in that location, i.e. it's safe to look there because your enemies are or because your, your allies are offering you intel. Greedy players will often get picked because they are constantly doing this and at some point the terrorists or the counter-terrorists, whoever's attacking this bomb site, are going to have an angle on you. Um, and be ready when you peek the corner. You can alternatively hold Goose, which offers more supporting coverage of ramp and long. Oftentimes, Ops and Autos will hold this position since they can react with pinpoint accuracy from this location. The main downside, of course, being that you're vulner vulnerable to both long, if they take it, and catwalk when they breach. The fifth position at A can float, play forward, or double up with another player. Here are some examples of different coverage locations. You can double up at long, helping with double doors, along with being close to ramp to help support from enemies pushing CT spawn, or even at catwalk. You can double up on ramp and goose to offer lots of angles of support, along with replacing any fallen teammates if they get picked. You can also hold this corner near CT spawn if you're only concerned with covering long A. Or you can camp this corner which may catch enemies from CT spawn off guard, along with pulling off ridiculous jumping shots towards catwalk. Which, surprisingly enough, you see quite often. You can also choose to play forward on catwalk, taking shots and then backing off after each burst. Now let's consider these positions in a scenario where only one to three allies are alive and the attacking enemies could come from any angle. If there are three alive, you can each call out and take a single coverage location. This means you need one watching long, one CT spawn, and one catwalk or short A. If there are only two of you, then focus on close bombsite positions like ramp, boxes, or back corner. Unless you have an op, in which case send the op long, plant for the op pick, and then have the other player hold ramp or the back corner. If you are the only player remaining, I would suggest holding back corner since it allows for close picks and fairly narrow uh, range of coverage. You can even crouch here to try and hide from snipers at long. If there is a sniper, you may want to hold up closer to boxes, but again, this is a difficult position to uh, successfully hold against multiple enemies. It's important to remember that as allies die, you need to dynamically reposition yourself to better coverage spots, if you can. For instance, if you're holding ramp and long A is lost, you may want to shift to a safer location, like behind crates, or to back corner. Now let's consider grenade locations from these perspectives. In pit at long, you can delay enemies pushing double doors by flashing or smoking them. This is especially useful if you want to support the bomb site without worrying about getting shot from the side.
At ramp, you can use HE grenades on enemies holding the close corner, along with smoking or flashing CT spawn. Ramp and boxes can also safely smoke, flash, and HE grenade catwalk. Back corner can safely flash rushing enemies at cat, smoke platform to protect from long, and grenade CT spawn. Now let's look at the bomb site from the perspective of the attackers. Generally, if you have enough time, you'll want to split your attacking force so the enemies can't con concentrate fire on one location. So let's assume you and two allies remain against four defending enemies. When coming from bomb site B, you can optionally choose to send one ally through CT spawn or have him support the catwalk push. But let's take a look at CT spawn first. Pushing through CT spawn is dangerous because you are extremely vulnerable to ops and riflers with, along with grenades and dropping enemies. However, there are a few tactics and positions you can employ to try and gain an advantage. From this angle, you are able to partially check car for a camping enemy, get a pick on lower ramp, get a pick on any enemies camping by boxes, especially if your ally has baited them out and you can check the dumpster corner for any enemies that might be jumping towards catwalk. While this position is dangerous and often seems to fail, it does offer some potential advantage depending on your timing. By choosing to remain hidden here until the push by catwalk and long, you can catch your enemies off guard by suddenly pushing ramp when they're not expecting it. Before we leave this position, let's consider some optimal grenade throws. First, one can easily lob an HE grenade into the back corner, which is an otherwise difficult target to engage. He or she can also smoke boxes obscuring camping enemies from targeting your ally at catwalk, and throw flashbangs onto ramp, which may allow your ally long to get a pick. Now let's look at Catwalk or Short A. The ally at this position has his work cut out for him because there are multiple vantage points that enemies can target this position. Thus, it is important for this player to utilize grenades before engaging. One potentially useful smoke is to lob one by the graffiti above the letter A. This denies multiple positions of coverage, allowing the ally to focus on just one platform position before moving closer. You can also block CT spawn by throwing a grenade high up the building. Smoke. Once your initial smoke is down, begin moving into the bomb site either alone with an ally below you in CT spawn or with the ally that followed you on catwalk. At long, your ally should enter very carefully since there are multiple places an enemy could hide. Try lobbing a smoke by blue crate to check double doors before moving out. Smoke. Once long A is secure, this ally has two options for supporting the bomb site. One, he can engage first by remaining long and drawing attention and fire. Flashbang. Flashbang. 
or two, he can throw smoke and attempt to move up close, supporting his rushing teammates and attacking ramp. And that's it. Uh, that is the you know basic positioning, basic grenades, and basic attack strategy for bombsite A on Dust Two. Uh, in the future, I want to do bombsite B on Dust Two, and then um, eventually do the other maps. Assuming that this is useful for people, um, I know it's kind of useful for me. Uh, I personally went into the maps just on my own a while back when I was starting to play more, just so I it, like I ran around the bomb sites, checking out different positions. Um, I'm not sure if everyone want, like wants to do that or that you know like I, I figured maybe creating a competitive snapshot that's kind of more quick to the point. Um, that way, people you know you can just go on YouTube, check it, see oh yeah that's right. I'll also be sure to um, at some point put it up on the blog. Maybe I'll make a little image with a summary a summary of you know each of the positions and maybe angles of coverage and stuff like that. And um, I don't know. Hopefully it'll be useful. Hopefully uh, some people will watch it. And then when I queue with them in competitive, they won't just run around like crazy, spraying in every direction. Um, that's hopefully what it'll solve. So whatever, I'm rambling again. So thanks for watching. Uh, consider subscribing, liking, all that sort of stuff. Leave a comment if you hated it, if you hated me or something. <laughs> uh, I might read it, might not, I guess. But okay, see ya.